Hey, what's up everyone? Plus Ultra James here coming at you with another video. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it and subscribe if you enjoy my content and want to see more. With that being said, let's get right into it. So deceased part five is here. We're close to the end of this story, you guys. But you guys are not prepared for what is about to happen. But before we go into the story, let's recap part four real quick. Lois Lane broadcasted around the world, calling out to all survivors. Mira arrived in Themyscira. Harley was saved by Poison Ivy. The Justice League gathered together. Damien has become the new Batman. And Captain Adam got infected and caused an explosion that completely destroyed Washington, Baltimore, and Metropolis. But if you'd rather watch that video, you'll find it in the description box down below. So, part 5 starts off immediately after the explosion with Superman and Wonder Woman who survived the blast and them looking at the aftermath. The narrator tells us, Superman and Wonder Woman always protected the world. No matter how dark the day, when people saw them, they knew hope. But they couldn't protect us from this. Three cities gone. Just gone. Washington, Baltimore, and Superman says, Metropolis. We then cut to Superman and Wonder Woman with full speed head to Metropolis to see if his family and everyone else survived. They find them, having survived the blast because of Dinah creating a green bubble with her ring that protected them. But that doesn't escape the fact that millions upon millions of people are just gone in an instant. Out of nowhere though, Lex Luthor approaches, yelling, Superman! Superman, initially thinking Lex has come to fight or hurt his family, then flashes in front of him with burning eyes of intense heat, saying to, Lu saying to Lex, Luthor by Rao, if you so much as... And then he's cut off by Lex replying, Truce. I'm not here to fight. I'm not here to add on to... But then he stops and drops to his knees and says to Superman, look what happened to our city. So I really like this scene because Superman approaches not in the mood for any games or a fight with Lex. I've read people say that Lex is begging to Superman or he's giving up in front of Superman, which is crazy to me. I don't know how you read this and that's what you get out of it. You're talking about a guy whose main goal is to prove himself superior to Superman and has even fought him one on one. No way would he ever beg for his life to Superman. In my opinion, when I read this, I took when I read this, I took it as a man who has become filled with despair after seeing a city he helped build, loved and considered his home, where also his company was that he built himself is just gone, completely gone, everything. Back to the story. Over the next few days, the Justice League takes down the internet. They take down every major server and every mass digital broadcasting device. Everything that humanity relied on was now severed. So the only, ways the, the only way the virus can be spread was through people. Two sanctuaries were established, places they thought the virus couldn't reach. We then go to Themyscira with Wonder Woman, Hippolyta, and Philippus, who is the Amazonian's high-ranking general and one of Diana's teachers. Hippolyta says to Diana, Diana, think of what you're asking. And Philippus says to her as well, we have never allowed man's world to set foot on. She's then cut off by Di Diana, responding to them saying, soon there won't be any of man's world left. We'll end up alone surrounded by death with it inevitably closing in on us. We're supposed to be protectors. It's time we offered our protection. They eventually agree. We then see Superman, Wonder Woman, and Queen Mira lifting sections of the seafloor, adding to landmass to Themyscira for the refugees of the world. Paradise Island, though, wasn't a paradise anymore. We cut to see Damien, the new Batman, or I'll hop between calling him Batman and Damien, so. Uh, we see him with Dinah and Ollie. They go to Gotham seeking Poison Ivy's help. She's created a thorn-filled jungle sanctuary. Batman says to them, let me do the talking. 
Oliver replies, are you sure? You're not exactly a people person. Damien says, Ivy's not exactly people. Out of nowhere, an infected Killer Croc lunges at them. Dinah says, out of the way, I'll... But then she's cut off by Damien and Ollie quickly responding to Croc with batarangs and arrows to his chest. And Ivy's vine stabbing and wrapping up Croc. She also wraps up Damien and Ollie. Ollie yells to Dinah, set us free. But Damien says, don't. We cut to see Ivy and Harley arrived with Harley saying, yeah, good call, Bat Boy. She walks up to Killer Croc saying, we killed Killer Croc. And asks them, how awesome is the death wall? Ollie replies, awesome is not the word I'd use. Ivy asks Damien, why are you here? And why is a tiny Robin dressed up as Batman? Damien replies, Batman is gone. Harley, shocked, says what? Ivy says, I'm sorry. Damien tells them that they're looking for sanctuary and survivors. Harley turns to Ivy saying, yeah, we've already started that conversation. Ivy says, I wouldn't call it a conversation. Harley has been nagging me nonstop. Harley then says, I'll stop nagging as soon as you agree to be a benevolent jungle queen. After some back and forth, Ivy eventually agrees, but she tells them that there are rules. The fruit of the green can only, can only be eaten if the green wills it. And if any humans harm it, they're going to be thrown out and fed to the monsters. Ali says, that's harsh. But Damien replies, we agree to your terms. We cut to the Fortress of Solitude, which has now become a new hall of heroes and an information hub. We get to see a funny back and forth between Lex Luthor and Cyborg. Luthing, Luthor asking Cyborg, this is quite impressive, Victor. Why haven't we worked together before? Cyborg replies, because you kept trying to kill me and my friends. Luthor says, in my defense, that was before I realized you could be useful. Oliver then approaches, asking, what are you working on? Victor replies, plans for arcs. Lex says the arcs will fit 7 million people. Superman approaches saying, we're not leaving. Then this part is kind of funny. Lex replies saying, Superman, I am the most intelligent person on the planet. And then he stops and asks Cyborg, wait, Batman is dead. Cyborg says yes. Then Luther continues by saying, right, then I am the most intelligent person on, on the planet. I'm telling you what the that the world is over. It's inevitable. If humanity is to survive, it has to leave Earth. Superman responds by telling him, We're not abandoning the planet. We're fighting for it. His mother Martha approaches and touches him on the shoulder, saying, Clark, it's the only way. Superman replies, Ma, it can't be. Lex Luthor then tells Superman, Losing two homeworlds in one lifetime. How careless. Lois approaches Lex, saying, Lex, then hits him with a strong cross to the face, breaking his nose. She then says to Lex, F you, Luther. Open your mouth against my husband again, and I'll shut it for you. We only need your mind, nothing else. Then I thought this part was funny. As she's walking away, she turns to John, saying, Um, violence is never the answer, John. But then John says, It looks like a pretty good answer over there. I totally didn't expect this to happen. When I saw that, I had the next Friday response. Lois Lane is a badass for that. I want my wife to be that badass. To just punch a guy right in the face if he says something wrong to me. Next, the narrator tells us that over the next few weeks, the heroes found survivors, taking them to the two sanctuaries for safety, to the Gotham jungle and the island of Themyscira. They began building the arcs. For the first time, they talked and grieved for their fallen friends. They thought they were in control, but they were never in control. Their mistake was bringing all the heroes together at the Fortress of Solitude. It started with a buzz. Firestorm asks everyone, can you hear that? Then the buzz grew into a scream. As that happened, everyone at the Fortress of Solitude began grabbing and clawing at their heads, yelling out in pain. Then the invisible death came. An infected Martian Manhunter infiltrated the Fortress of Solitude, blasting through Lex Luthor's body, killing him in front of the Flash. Flash using his speed looking around as fast as he can, asking everyone, what is that? Can anyone see anything? Then the death came for him. Martian Manhunter pops up behind him, slashing Barry's back, infecting him. Ollie yells, Martian Manhunter. Wally West yells, Barry. Dinah then blasts Martian Manhunter with her ring. Black Knight charges up electricity to throw at Martian Manhunter. But the Firestorm yells at them all to move, powering up his Firestorm Matrix. He blasts Martian Manhunter, burning him to ashes. After the battle, Wally asks, where's Barry? Superman using his vision and says, he's running. 
As Wally's about to chase after him, saying, I'll get him, Superman stops him, saying, no, I'll go. Oliver asks Superman, do you think you can honestly catch him? Superman replies, no. See, you're about to see why Batman and Barry said if any of the speedsters got infected, it would spell disaster for the world. This is why I keep saying that Batman is the master strategist of the Justice League. Because Batman would have not allowed the League to let the speed speedsters free, or at least he would have come up with a way for them to be protected. And he definitely would have had defenses in place at the Fortress of Solitude. Definitely. We then see an infected Barry running, spreading death around the world faster than the speed of sound, infecting everyone he comes across. We cut to see Superman flying out into space, asking Cyborg, is Flash truly dead? Promise me. Cyborg replies, he is, I promise. Cyborg then asks Superman, how are you going to catch him? I don't have to catch up to him. I can come from the other side. I can meet him head on. We then see Superman flying straight through the Flash, tearing his body apart. Superman then stops and looks at the aftermath, saying to Barry, I'm so sorry. But then he looks down and sees it. Barry's infected fingers stabbed into the Man of Steel. On this day, we learned what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. They merge. The narrator then tells us, I don't know how long Superman had. His body could obviously fight the infection longer than others. I don't know how long it seemed to him. A man who can move at those speeds. But with the time he had left, he crossed the world. We then see Superman flying, moving maybe the fastest he's ever gone before. He first goes to Wally, saying to him, Barry's gone, I'm so sorry. Wally replies, oh no, and so am I. Superman then asks Wally, I need you to connect Lois, Ma, and John to the Speed Force. Can you do that for me? Wally replies, I can. Wally connects them to the Speed Force, moving as fast as Superman so he can talk to them one last time. Superman first goes to his mother, saying, Ma, thank you for finding me, for raising me, for teaching me. Thank you for giving me your name and your values and your empathy. My world ended, and you and Pa gave me another one, second to Lois, the love of his life, and says, I have absolutely no regrets. I honestly don't know how I got so lucky. I crossed an ocean of stars and somehow I found you. Thank you for choosing me. Lois with tears in her eyes replies, thank you for choosing me. They kiss one last time. Finally, he goes to his son, John, and says, I know things look dark, but you're the light, you're the hope, you're going to change the universe, I know it. With tears now swelling his eyes, he continues, no pressure, just keep helping, you will make mistakes, you will fail sometimes, but I will always, always be proud of you. I have seen so much of the universe. You're the best thing in it. John breaks down and hugs his father one last time. Superman then tells them all, You, my family, thank you for being my world. The narrator tells us what happens next. He tried, he tried to leave, to get as far away from Earth as he could, to starve himself of oxygen before the virus could. Maybe if he hadn't stopped to speak to us, maybe if he hadn't, then Clark, my husband, was gone, and any hope of our world was gone with him. And that's the end to Deceased Part 5. I told you guys you weren't going to be prepared for what was about to happen. Lex Luthor is dead, the Flash got infected, and spread death around the world. We learned that the narrator of this story was Lois Lane the entire time. And finally... The Man of Steel, Superman, is infected. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And subscribe if you want to see more and also want to see the finale of this story. Other than that, have an awesome day. Peace, love, blessings to you. And remember to always, every day, go beyond. Plus Ultra.